Administrative and Projects Committee of the Contra Costa Transportation Authority and welcome you all here. Um, first item is public comment. This is an opportunity for any member of the public to comment on an item that is not on today's agenda but is within our purview. We will also take comments on each item on the agenda. Is there anyone with a public comment? Seeing none, the next item is the approval of the minutes from our March 5th meeting. Motion and a second by Commissioner Pierce and Commissioner Arnrich. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next item is the consent calendar. These are items that we will act on in one consolidated motion unless anyone in the audience, staff, or on the committee wishes to remove an item. Is there anyone who would like to remove an item? Second. Motion by Commissioner Pierce, second by Commissioner Butt. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Which brings us down to... Item 10, our legislative update. Lindsay. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I wanted to start with the an update on the federal side. Um, as I mentioned during our last meeting, you know, there's been a lot of discussion on Capitol Hill about reauthorizing Map 21 and transportation funding. It, it's been a bit of a hot topic, um, and unfortunately, it has stayed a hot topic with a lot of talk but not quite a lot of action um, in terms of moving a reauthorization forward. Congress is currently on a recess and they don't get back until April 13th. Um, and the current MAP 21 extension expires May 31st. So the consensus is there's not a lot of time to put together a multi-year reauthorization plan in that short window. Um, so it looks like there'll be another short-term extension um, and right now they're talking internally about how long that extension will be um, as opposed to, to kind of having a, a full multi-year bill. Um, so what I'm put on the dais in front of you that you should have is this little invitation to stand up for transit um, in order to kind of continue to increase awareness for the need for transportation funding. The American Public Transportation Association is putting together this um, National Transportation Infrastructure Day event on April 9th and all of the Bay Area transportation and transit agencies are working together to host an event on April 9th. There'll be a big press conference at the Trans Bay Terminal to send a message from the Bay Area to our elected officials in Washington that we need transportation funding um, and we're essentially standing up for transportation. Um, so what you have in front of you is an invitation um, we have put together a collective video talking about why transportation funding is important. You're welcome to view it. The little link is here. You're welcome to share it. And we'll be putting out a little packet, um, and I'm sure Randy or I can email it to all of the commissioners with some buttons and other items so you too can help us stand up for transportation and, tr and transportation funding on April 9th. Um, it should be an, a nationwide effort and we're trying to do our part to help keep this going, keep awareness going. Um, and additionally, I know that a few members of our staff and the chair and vice chair of our board are traveling to Washington, D.C. that week that Congress gets back from vacation. We'll be there April 13th and 14th, and um, we'll probably be flying back the morning of the 15th for the board meeting. So we're hoping to have some really good discussions kind of following up on National Transportation Infrastructure Day to continue to make our point about how important um, federal funding is in the types of projects that we do here in Contra Costa. Um, so that's a quick report on the federal side, and I'm going to turn it over to Mark Watts with- Are there any questions on the federal? Be aware of that consent to <laughs> Yes. Uh -huh. um, All right, Mark. Okay. Thank you, good morning. Um, Happy to be here today. I've got a few things to report to you and one bill to uh, highlight and bring to your attention for possible action. Um, there's a flurry of quiet but intense work going on in Sacramento looking at ways to finance transportation. Uh, if you recall, back in February, the speaker uh, uh, released an, a, a concept that she had in mind and she wants to address transportation finance this year. Uh, essentially, it was a, uh, or it is, a uh, net $2 billion a year for a five-year period, generating $10 billion, roughly split in half between 
state road preservation and local road preservation. Uh, she is coordinating um, the next step, which is fleshing out the proposal with her chairman, uh, Assemblymember Jim Frazier. And uh, it's going to be uh, his, I, I believe it's going to be his bill to, to move forward. And uh, we we'll look forward to seeing what else he puts into play as he moves forward. The Senate, um, the, the quiet secret that seems to have escaped and a lot of folks know about now is Senator Bell's effort. Senator Bell is the chairman, new chairman of the Senate Transportation Committee. He's developing a package that counts on uh, a range of, uh, of uh, funding sources, uh, including uh, gas tax, diesel tax, some uh, registration fee, and some a small amount of VLF. His proposal generates in excess of $3.5 billion per year, um, and we're looking forward to his uh, releasing that more publicly in the coming weeks. Um, the style that, uh, of the approach that he intends to take is to put the bill into play in his committee and move it forward through the committee process. Uh, in contrast, we're hearing, and we'll find out that from uh, Chairman Frazier, that the, the Assembly may prefer to deal with this through the budget process. So uh, two different uh, versions and uh, two different things to consider. On a, a pretty happy note, because any of these uh, new taxes, if you're uh, advocating for them, would require a two-thirds vote. And so that necessitates Republican, uh, some Republican support. And there is uh, a member of the Transportation Committee uh, in the Senate, a Republican who's uh, putting together his own, uh, I won't say counterproposal, it, it uh, in, many w in many ways mirrors what Mr. Bell is doing. And I think that's a happy thing for folks who will be advocating for transportation funding. Um, he, his goes a little bit further, a little more uh, in the tax side, which is kind of surprising, but I think his attitude is, if I'm gonna take a hit, I wanna try to address the job that needs to be addressed. So that's his approach. Um, and then uh, finally, I do know that he's gaining support from his leadership, and they're looking at ways to lock down and protect should some new f funding source that's not already protected emerge as, uh, as part of um, whatever the negotiations produce. So that's that for um, what's going on in the transportation finance uh, arena. I wanted to briefly mention, uh, if you recall several months or early in March, the Board of Equalization uh, pursuant to state law to, to keep the tax swap uh, gas tax uh, revenue neutral, went through a process and their forecast showed uh, a continuation of lower gas prices, which results in, a, in, in an adoption in, uh, on their part of a lower reduced amount by six and a half cents per gallon for the price-based excise tax. Uh, that's a tough pill to swallow. It's about $800 million for 2015-16. Uh, their initial staff report had suggested uh, over seven cents, so there was some work effort pointed at them to uh, kind of look at their numbers more closely, and they did. Uh, but to address the volatility, you know, one year it went from 18 to 21, the next year it went from 21 to 18, and now it's plummeting to six point, uh, plummeting by six and a half cents. Uh, Senator Bell has introduced SB 321, and there's a lot of activity behind the scenes trying to come up with a measure that the Board of Equalization could use that would reduce the volatility. What's emerged is more likely a longer look back period and, and uh, a projection period uh, <clears throat> because they don't want to go through the up and down from year to year. They'd like to smooth that out. Um, and that is one that uh, I'd like to put on the table for you to consider endorsing. It doesn't change the gross taxes over time, but it would smooth out the abrupt changes year to year. And because we don't know the final form, I would recommend to you uh, through staff that, uh, that, that the position that would be appropriate would be support and concept if that's your will. I have two other things to, to quickly cover. Um, the hot issue is the issue of tolling in California, the authorization for the state and regional entities. Um, Mr. Frazier is carrying on behalf of the Self-Help County Coalition, uh, AB 194. Um, amendments have been prepared that attempt to deal with uh, the relationship between MTC and the counties in the Bay Area. Uh, what seems to be emerging would be something along the lines of uh, 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 permitting an agreement to be, exist between MTC 
in each county for any tolling activity in that area to permit the transportation entity that has a jurisdiction in that county to undertake, uh, per the agreement, project development work, engineering, and environmental documentation and financial studies so that they'll feel more comfortable with uh, the level of tolling that may might exist. That's as far as uh, it appears Mr. Frazier uh, uh, feels is, is appropriate, and they will be reaching out to individual counties to see what their reaction is. Uh, the rest of the state is uh, okay with the rest of the bill and are waiting to see how this, this, uh, this discussion uh, unfolds. Um, and lastly, um, there's a measure uh, AB 1098 by Mr. Bloom. It builds on language that dealt with uh, priority development areas a couple years ago and in infill development that allowed uh, transportation entities who were going to uh, develop in those areas to use a different uh, metric for, uh, for um, traffic rather than focus on uh, level of service, it allowed uh, <clears throat> the assessment of the impact on VMT and GHG. And this bill now would expand that to all uh, sustainable community uh, strategy uh, development. So the metric would be moved and it's uh, of concern I, I hear from planning entities uh, around the state at this point in time. Um, I just want to highlight that for you to know, let you know we're tracking that and see if there's going to be any developments that might uh, uh, change before we would come back with a position to recommend. So that completes my report for today. Okay, so my recollection is that the one you would like us to take a position in concept on is the bill to smooth the rate of the excise tax over Correct. a greater number of years. Okay. I move that. A motion to approve by Commissioner Pierce. Second. A nodding of head by... Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Taylor, was that a second, Mr. Taylor? <laughs> that was a second, okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there questions about any of the other items? No. Oh, thank you for the update. And that brings us to item 11, a request for a statement of qualifications and proposal to provide program and project management and project controls for Measure C and J projects. Mr. Chittenden? Yes, thank you, uh, Chair Tatson and the committee members. Rush Jindan, Deputy Executive Director for Projects here at the Authority. Um, item 11 is an action item seeking your approval to <clears throat> award a consulting service contract for program project management services to Stantec Consulting and begin negotiation on final scope and fee. If you concur with this recommendation and we are able to successfully negotiate with Stantec, the base contract that we're recommending would be for a two-year period fiscal years uh, 2016, 2015 and 16 and 2016 and 17 with an option in the contract for years three and four um, that would be executed based on their performance. Um, our recommendation also includes approval to issue a notice to proceed not to exceed $200,000 so that we can begin the transition from our current uh, program management team to Stantec uh, concurrently with the final negotiations. Um, for reference purposes, the existing program management contract averages about $2.4 million per year. So I'm expecting it'll be pretty much in that same range, maybe a little bit higher just to reflect uh, uh, inflation that's uh, occurred over the last few years. Um, Stantec was deemed by our selection panel to be the most qualified team of three teams that uh, submitted proposals. Um, the selection team was myself. Randy Carlton, uh, Brad Beck, Susan, Hisham, Jack, and Ivan. So we had a representation throughout the whole, uh, uh, the authority. Um, just wanted to point out that our uh, criteria included a local preference and Stantec is committed to 73% utilization of Contra Costa firms. Um, before I ask you uh, uh, for your concurrence with our recommendation, just wanted to introduce Habib Shamskow from Stantec, who's in the audience. Many of you know Habib from uh, their uh, work as a partner in the Gomentum Station uh, program. They've already proven their ability to deliver value for the authority, and I'm confident they can do that with this, uh, this contract as well. So uh, I'd like to wrap up my uh, recommendation and ask for your concurrence. Thank you. Are there any questions? Commissioner Arterich. Uh, 
Ross, thank you. Uh, were you surprised that we only had three that proposed, given, you know, these are it's pretty, I mean, it looks like 200000 This is a this is a multi-million dollar contract. Yeah, um, I, I was I was expecting five or six to be honest. Um, I do know one firm that stated they declined um, because of the local preference. Um, that's a pretty pretty high bar. Um, but beyond that, there is a lot of teaming among the three proposals. So, other than that particular consultant, I think I saw everybody that I thought I, I would see it. Just you know whether they were prime or in a sub role. Okay. I appreciate the local consultant. I'd second the motion if we're going to make a motion. That brings us to item 12. And while the staff contact is, is listed as Ms. Willis, I actually think Mr. Carlton ought to handle this one. <laughs> uh, thank you, APC Chair Tatson. Um, this is a press release that announces that the authority has been the recipient uh, for the third time in a row for the uh, Certificate of Excellence, which is issued by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and, and Canada. Uh, and what this means is that the audited financial report that we prepare uh, for the authority, for the citizens, for the bondholders, and the rating agencies meets or exceeds all the best practices uh, that are established uh, by GFOA uh, for preparation of financial statements. This means, too, that we're presenting our information in the most transparent way that's compatible with what is expected of people that review these statements very closely. Um, I'd like to thank um, the board, the executive director, and especially the finance department staff for, for their, their work and, 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 and effort. And, helping us achieve uh, this standard, high standard. Thank you. Congratulations. Very nice. So is there a four-peak on the way, then? <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Uh, that brings us, um, brings us to commissioner and staff comments. So I will apologize to the committee. I um, forgot to ask it to be a closed session on today's agenda, and so there isn't. So. Let me tell you about a couple of PERS rules, and then after that, uh, we can decide whether we want to have a closed session at the beginning of the authority meeting. So PERS does limit the maximum salary that is eligible for um, PERS coverage. However, if an employee joined before a certain date, that cap doesn't hold. So a number of our long-term employees, regardless of whether they've been at the authority or other agencies, would still be eligible to go over that cap. Um, the second question, was, or second issue that PERS deals with is what happens if an employee enjoys a salary increase that is greater than the salary increases of the next group of employees who work, who work for him or her? And there are limits in that case if there is a dis, dis, big discrepancy. Um, the limits get better the more the time passes. It's essentially it's a five-year look back. Um, and the authority or the employer can ask for, for CalPERS to give a waiver to that. Um, but the recommendation from our attorney is that since you can't be assured what CalPERS is going to do until retirement occurs, um, that the better approach would be to get a concurrence from the employee stating that there is risk there. Um, you could ask for a waiver up front, but you, we just wouldn't know if we're going to get it. So that's sort of a summary of all these government code sections. Um, would the – so given all that, would you like to have a – closed session before the authority meeting? Yes. Okay. Okay. What do you want to do it just before the authority meeting or? or? Okay, well, that's fine. Right. Well, I can't, I could, Newell, do you want to do it on a different date? On the authority date, okay. All right. So five is fine. Yeah. 
That would be on the 15th. Yes. Um, if we're going to do it, will that be on the agenda? Yes. Right. This will be on the agenda. And then we'd also have a closed session for the authority. Well, no. Okay, but would it be on the authority agenda? Yes. Yes. It'll be on both. So, so it's going to be on both. So okay. it'll be like what we did in, in March. Right. The, right. I got it. Committee would meet. Closed it. session. So carry our recommendation to the authority. April fifteenth. 5 p.m. Correct. And so, Christina, it, just use the same agenda that we had for the meeting of the committee before the March authority meeting. And then we make sure we have a closed session item on the authority agenda as well. Have the two um, closed sessions for right. review. Correct. Okay. Any other... Um, Commissioner comments? Uh, just a comment. I just really want to um, compliment staff for doing an awesome job with Randy and everybody at uh, GoMentum. The press coverage is the biggest press coverage we've had for, I think, anything we've done. I mean, yesterday, the day before, the news was lighting up. Um, but it was pretty pretty thrilling to see the number of participants there, too. And, uh, you know, with Honda's announcement, um, and the news media was really picked up BMW and Honda. And the fact is, is that it's here locally. And I think for our agency and, and really for Randy and everybody that's Jack's working on this, um, this is a big deal. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see this go forward. And, you know, who knows? I think we're going to get to a point where we're going to have to agendize this in some way and have a plan and a budget and then things to go along with us to wrap this in because it's kind of grown out of things. But... Um, I just see it getting a little bigger, um, as it should. So, Yeah, I would concur. That was quite a day. And I, I came home with a pocket full of business cards from folks, and, and everybody wants to be in on this. And, and as I talked to them, I tried repeating over and over again that one of our goals is to bring their business here, not just for the test bed, but to locate here in Contra Costa to, to put their, their plant here. And whatever comes out of this, we want them to use Contra Costa employees and, and build stuff and, and have this be their, their branch office and, and all of that, if not their new headquarters. And I got a lot of positive feedback on that. A lot of the companies said, you know, it would be a whole lot more efficient for us to be in this region than it would be in some of the other parts of the Bay Area. So that was really encouraging. And kudos to everyone. Habib, thank you. You kept everything running, made sure every PowerPoint was keyed up right on time, and made sure we all knew where we were supposed to be at what minute. <laughs> and Lindsay, you were amazing. You are a rock star. So um, kept everybody moving, and of course, the, the Star Trek hero of the day over here, Randy Iwasaki, was uh, – you came home with a, a boatload of business cards, I know. So it was, it was pretty cool. Everybody I talked to said, how do I get to meet him? And I said, well, he's right there. We'll just walk up and say hi. And they, really, can we? <laughs> so it was a pretty cool day. Thank you all for your, your input into it and making it happen because it was, it was awesome. All right, uh, staff comments. I was going to say that um, kudos to Lindsay. She's, you know, this really tested her, her mettle. I mean, she, there was a lot of pressure, and she never folded once. And she I, was sick, too. Yeah, and I called her to make sure she was doing okay, but she, she's uh, just, just great. So you know she can hang with, because Ross worked. Ross will work day and night. I mean, he'll, and that's just normal for him. But when she had, when she can keep up with Ross, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. They will. They are televising this again on April seventeenth. I can email out the list of yeah, dates. So Contra Costa TV um, taped the whole day, and they'll be airing it for us multiple times in the next month. You know, I've also had requests for the powerpoints. If we can get those posted as well, I've had several of the press that have asked. To 
be able to see those right. slides, and I would suspect some of the slides will wind up in the newspaper. We're, we're working on that these next few days, and we actually um, own all the footage that Contra Costa TV um, taped for us, so we're working on potentially even making that all available on the website as well. So thank you. are adjourned until 5 o'clock on April 15th. Sorry, I couldn't join you. It was a big well, I, I, I mean, I've seen that. I've seen this stuff a lot of times. I see it. It was amazing. This boss session, you had the insurance companies. Okay. Representative, and you had. Cal she Poly. was the only downer of the day. But I mean, that, that's a big issue, right? How, what, oh, what, it is. What,